Well, happy Sunday to you all. We have today in the uh, the gospel the uh, the the famous parable of the uh, the wheat and the tares. It, it's a, a continuation, really, from from what started last week, uh, a, a series of parables on the kingdom of God. And last week we heard a little bit about the the kingdom of God and the human soul. This week, really, though, the the, the parables and there are three that we'll, uh, we have in the gospel. Uh, the parables focus on the kingdom of God and then the world that we, we find ourselves in. And in this, in this regard, I think uh, a lot of us would, would look at the parable of the wheat and the tares, perhaps especially today, and, uh, and identify with, with that, that parable. We, it's, a, it's a very striking parable, perhaps precisely because we, we have this sense that it, it reflects the reality that we see in the world around us. You know, the, the wheat and the weeds, the wheat and the tares, good and evil kind of all mixed in together. Um, and, uh, and really though, I, I would say that this parable comes with, uh, a, a cautionary note, you know, on the one hand, it's, it's encouraging because we, we see this acknowledgement in, in the words of Christ that there will always be, you know, that this mixture of good and evil, there will always be, uh, problems that we, we see cropping up, uh, you know, within our own hearts, certainly as, as Christians. Uh, within our brothers and sisters in Christ, within within the church, within the society around us, you know, th there's always going to be this this reality that that God is sowing His seed, is is sowing the gospel in in the hearts of of all of mankind, but then also there's this reality of evil, the devil who who also tries to uh, to to lead people astray in in many different ways. But it comes with this cautionary note, kind of. Uh, right in the middle, that it's not a good idea uh, to become too much of a crusader when it comes to fighting against evil. Perhaps we can say especially uh, evil in the hearts of other people. You know, the, the, there's that acknowledgement that, that if we try to uproot the weeds, uh, then we will also wind up uprooting the good as well. You know, if we, if we try to, to kind of attack and purge evil, uh, then, then we might actually find ourselves doing a, a great deal of harm. I think it, it's it's helpful to recognize this today because we we find ourselves uh, in in the middle of this this very very bitter kind of cultural struggle struggle cult, cultural war perhaps we could say, and and the smoke of that of that war sometimes makes its way into the church, and and we find ourselves sometimes adopting these these ultimately non-Christian uh, ways of going about things, the, the same kind of bitterness and rhetoric, the same inability at times to have, to have a, an intelligent conversation about, about some of the important things that we really do need to talk about. You know, all of these different things at times have kind of influenced the church and, and or in, influenced, I should say, certain people within the church. And, uh, and, and at times made it difficult for us to uh, really to have the conversations that we need to have to, to move through the problems that we face and so on uh, in, in the way that is appropriate, the way that we really should respond. And in particular, what the parable today holds out for us is the recognition, uh, you know, we're, we're asked to recognize that ultimately it really is God who saves. It is God who you know, is, is the one who's able to, to, to sort out the wheat and the weeds to kind of resolve that problem. And that it's not something that we can simply manage by our, our own efforts, by our own struggles with, with the people around us. Even, you know, like we're, we're not Pelagians, we don't think that we can save and correct ourselves simply by our own efforts. Our, our efforts are necessary, but uh, God's grace really is, is what accomplishes everything in us and in the people around us. So, you know, we, we have that, that gospel uh, that, that parable, uh, and it's encouraging because we realize that, you know, while we recognize everything that might be happening around us, while we recognize that, you know, perhaps there are problems and perhaps there are very serious problems, still at the same time, God knows exactly what is happening. Uh, he, he, he saw it happening. He, he preached about it when, when he was here on earth. Uh, and, and so we shouldn't be too alarmed or, or disconcerted. Uh, that, that God somehow isn't quite noticing what's going on uh, or, or just waiting for us to finally, you know, take up our, our, our pitchforks and, and go and solve all the, all the problems that, uh, 
that, that face the church and the world around us. We also, though, have, after this gospel, two very, very brief parables that it seems to me are placed after this gospel quite deliberately. So the first one, of course, is, is this, this parable of the must, about the mustard seed. The, it's, it's planted in the ground, it grows, it becomes the, the mighty tree, and then the, the birds of the air and creatures take refuge in its branches and so on. So in the context, you know, directly following this parable, what exactly does that mean? As much as there is always this problem of the mixture of good and evil in our hearts and within the church, within society around us and all that, still, where the gospel is planted, where the kingdom of God is planted, it continues to take root and to grow and then to become something which actually becomes sort of a, a refuge and a source of protection and life for, you know, even like kind of the strays that come in, the, the birds of the air, the people who, who are kind of drawn to take refuge within the kingdom of God and, and in a particular way, of course, within the church. Uh, because they recognize in in it something good and stable and life giving, even if they don't fully recognize exactly, you know exactly what it is. And, and I think I think we see this many times. People who are who are drawn to the church as as kind of uh, a recognition that it's really one of the last safe refuges, one of one of one of the few places where they can really go and and, and be secure. In a similar kind of way, we have that last parable of, of the, the little bit of yeast mixed in with the dough that, that eventually raises up the, the whole loaf. Uh, again, you know, this, when we look at it with this, this eye to the kingdom of God in the modern world and so on, it's a recognition that even though, uh, even though perhaps at times, you know, the, the world might be very ill disposed to Christianity, even though it might not want to, to accept it in one way or another, um, perhaps even even to the point of, of persecuting or, or being upset with Christians, as we saw, particularly in, in the early Roman Empire. Still, where the gospel is present, where the kingdom of God is present, where where the church is present, uh, even even in a very small dose, it is something which, in, in a sense, spreads out through the rest of society, and just elevates it. You know, perhaps perhaps not as obviously in some times as in others. Um, but, you know, it, it, it seems like what this gospel is saying, what this parable is saying, is that, again, despite the problems that we might run into, still, the church continues to do its job to fulfill its mission of, of lifting up society, of lifting up the world around us. Uh, and, and even perhaps without the, the open recognition of the people who are lifted up by it, uh, the, the church continues to fulfill this mission of drawing people just a little bit closer to Christ, uh, saving saving them or, or allowing Christ through the church to save them from their sins, to kind of sort of heal and correct certain things that need healing and correction, perhaps in a very small way, perhaps in a, in a way that we don't really recognize uh, immediately or very easily. But still, despite the problems, despite the good and evil, uh, we still recognize that the, the gospel, where it is planted, continues to take root, to grow, to flourish, to lift up the people around it. And, uh, and, and that really is a source of great encouragement. You know, the, the, the parable, the first parable especially, does seem to paint a, a little bit of a grim picture, at least at, at first. But, uh, but at the same time, it's a frank assessment of, of the fact that we, we are always surrounded by this mixture of good and evil. Uh, and, and that we shouldn't be too discouraged by that. Uh, God is, of course, quite well aware of everything that's going on, does not abandon his church, and continues to ensure that the, the gospel is preached, that the kingdom of God takes root, that, that souls are, are lifted up and drawn to Christ. And, uh, and this really is, is the message of this week. This is, this is a, the, the great source of our hope, uh, even in the midst of, of sometimes very, very difficult challenges that, that face that face us as Christians and that face the church around the world, uh, we still have this great hope uh, that, you know, despite our, our best efforts to the contrary at times, God still somehow manages to save us.